Do that? I don't know. It's different. I don't. It's got it's my name, so it makes no. It's all the same. That is true. My website doesn't have my name. I didn't go that direction. I do have a URL that directs to it. VillainVDH.com directs back to ice cream for everyone. So there's that going on. So we're here. Good morning. This we're here number, after a off week. An off week. This is number eight. The summer. It's because summer holidays, right? That's what it is. Yes. It is what it is. It's the, so that's why this, I, I temporarily named it Teaching Tangents uh, Summer Holiday se Sessions. Oh, wow. That's a great idea. Because this is a summer holiday set. Is Yeah. I suppose I'm more tuned in with the rhythms of the school year. So. Well, the, so the, that's, that's a funny one because I wasn't, but now I have to because the whole of France functions by school rhythm, which is super weird to me. But then I, um, I, I'm getting used to, I technically call myself or have been saying, yeah, I'm more French than anything, but there's so many things that don't make sense about this country, including and not limited to the whole country works by school holidays rhythm. That's interesting. The it's, September it, back to school is for everyone. August is now the country's turned off pretty much. And, and doubly, yeah. well, I mean, so the vacation, everybody's on vacation or a lot of people on vacation. And um, yeah, it's just, it's not just people in school that function by this, the summer holidays. And some people are working, but there's just not much going on in Paris or many of the big cities in August. And then even yeah. the political, you know, they, yeah. they talk yeah. about the back to school, and September back to Mark? school. Yeah, is it, are you back on repeating? No, but your video is froze. There a lag again? You're, Oh Your video God. froze and there is a lag. Sorry. My connection unstable. Oh. oh, you're back. Well, sort of. You're frozen again. I can hear you. Okay, let me talk about. Well, my mark is this. Oh. I, I can't hear you fine at all. Like it's all metally stringing on horrible. Not working. This is not good. That is very weird because I had. I hear two words that work and then it trails off in metal weirdness and you're still frozen on camera. This is not working any better than two weeks ago. You try closing everything else? Do you want to try turning our cameras off? I mean, it's presumably it's your internet connection. I'm sorry. Should I show off my t-shirt in the meantime? I don't know if I'm on my own or not. You'd like your camera froze and I can't you hear you at all. Oh, he's gone. All right, great. Well, I'll show my t-shirt in the meantime <laughs> to the empty camera. This is my t-shirt for this week. It's the, the great ramen. So it's kind of a pun with a monster ramen. So my take on it is that it's a design that's a bit of a take on the giant kaiju monsters. And also the great wave off, what is it, Kanigawa, I think I like to say, it. it's not, I might be butchering that. Um, but the series of drawings from, I can't remember his name now. <clears throat> the artist, ah, what's his name? I don't know what his name is. Um, great wave, great. let me just look at it while I'm filling. It's Kanagawa, not Kanigawa. Kanagawa, so that was pretty much correct. And what is his name? Hokusai, yes, of course. <clears throat> Hokusai. So there's, <coughs> sorry, a bit of a homage to the work of Hokusai, to Japanese manga, and to kaiju monsters, and obviously to ramen. Ramen noodles are fantastic. And I don't know what's going on with James. And I can't have a teaching tangent conversation by myself. Let's find out how long I can fill in for it. So some of the things that we said we were going to talk about during the uh, summer 
hot ice sessions. So we had a chat about what we were doing. And of course, James is not really getting any fresh questions from his students because it's the summer holidays. And I thought, well, we can either take a recess and we will be taking recesses because while well, we took last week off because I wasn't available and I was away from home. Uh, and we may well take another couple of sessions off in August. But in the meantime, we're going to talk about what happens on summer holidays, what we like to do on summer holidays. We're going to talk about why and what is the concept of a break or a vacation or a holiday. We're going to talk a little bit about, I had a good chat with my father yesterday, who is one of the people who watches, well, he's my prime audience. He's the person who watches everything that I, and listens to everything that I publish. And he noted a few things that are recurring conversations for me at the moment. So I wanted to talk about those with James a little bit. Uh, and, uh, and it made me think about, to talk about what we have as conversations with our parents. Oh, James is back. I was filling in. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> I was filling. That's, well, good job. My I don't I, know about that, but I did it. <laughs> I have no idea what was going on. My internet, I've come downstairs, just isn't working. Or wasn't working up. But it you, might, you might need a Wi-Fi repe repeater or something like that, or, or an antenna. That's what we have. Oh, you there. have that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that, I don't... when's the last time you checked your broadband speed? Uh, not for a while. But you know what? Good. It's working. But so you had to come downstairs like last time. Yeah. I'm downstairs now. Weird. Yeah. Very weird. I have no idea what that was. But my wife was using it the same booster upstairs no problem just now for a video conference not for a video conference i did a video video yesterday recorded over zoom no problem very weird i i, I don't know what to tell you but you should check it you should check your broadband speed at multiple times in the day oh really okay i'll start doing that wow live and learn what were you filling in you were saying well, I, I, so I, I showed off my t-shirt. Oh, what's yours? Oh, wow. Japanese, Korean, Japanese. The great ramen. So I, I just, uh, I'm going to repeat it, but uh, I think it's, uh, the way I interpret this one is a, it's a nod and a homage to the great wave off Kanagawa of Hokusai, yep. as yeah. well as Kaiju monsters of Japanese tradition, Godzilla, etc. Yeah. yeah. As well as obviously a good ramen noodle thing. Yeah. And some kind of manga-ish nod. It's cool. I like it. I uh, have uh, Satriali's oh, cool. pork store. I, is that an actual place or? It's it's the pork. It's the one of the fronts that Tony Soprano uses. Mm. I forgot about the Sopranos. It's a long oh, time ago. My favorite TV series. You know, I never the, finished watching it. I kind of stopped halfway through somehow. I can't remember. I think why. it's the. I also think it's the best. I think it's better than The Wire and better than Breaking Bad. Uh, I haven't seen The Wire. I know. I have to watch it. I, I have been. It was one of those where so many people were talking about it that I kind of just. Did you kind of go like? Eh. Yeah, and I was. I think. It was on while I was traveling, more or less, and I was just not really paying attention to TV shows all that much. It's, it's really good. I might be I'm wrong about that, actually, now that I think about it. I, I, might, I might have just been busy with whatever, something else. Go figure. Well, Sopranos, Wire, and... Breaking Bad, I watched. Hang on. Oh, Breaking Bad. Sopranos, The Wire, and something else were all HBO. Game of Thrones, they're all HBO. Yeah. So, yeah, interesting. What about today's mug? Uh, it's, you know, I don't have a lot of mugs, so it's my Little Prince mug. Only because I'm really proud of my mug, which okay. I'm probably going to use for the, over the entire summer sessions. I like it. Killer Coffee is a good mug. Killer Coffee. It's from brand Iron and Glory. They do some cool stuff. Cork on then, the outside <clears throat> and a kind of a thinner plastic on the inside, but it feels warm and really nice to hold and drink. That's pretty cool. So you were talking about play? And then summer. I talked about what are we, I, talk, I just went over what we were doing. So the fact that we're going to take some breaks, it's summer vacation, you don't have as many questions from students, and that we're going to talk about what we do on holidays, what are we play with on holidays, what is the concept of it, um, 
and also just started talking about the fact that I had a chat with my father, who is the main, my main number one audience person uh, of anything I publish. <laughs> and uh, a chat I have with him yesterday, and he said, you should talk about that with James. And I was talk like, about oh, the I fact, guess. Talk about the fact that your dad is the number one audience. No, we'll talk no about what I was talking about with him, which, and they, so, which was money, basically. He was like, you're always talking about, you're always concerned about money. You should talk about that with James. Uh, we can talk about the monetary system and the impending collapse and all of that. Well, that's or... a bit intense, but I was, he was just, <laughs> we can. Uh, we he might was just get noting there. that I'm worried about money and I keep bringing it up. And uh, and I was like, well, sort of. I mean, I, it's yes, it's on my mind because it's been pretty thin on the ground lately. Mm. And it's on my mind. And it's on my mind, particularly when I am independent uh, as a freelancer. When I'm the times when I've been fully employed, I don't talk about that. But then I have other complaints about work, and uh, there has been several kind of milestones. So two years ago, when I started freelancing after my last uh, kind of long contract that was like contract, then turned into full time, then was mm -hmm. terminated. But um, I, I had one big kind of epiphany, breakthrough, realization about the fact that. I was like, wait a minute, actually, no matter how much I worry about whether I'm going to make rent, where the next contract is coming from, whether the next piece like bit of money is coming from, mm -hmm. I always, I've always made it. I've always been able to pay rent. And not only have I always been able to pay rent, not always, always, but since like my twenties, um, I've always been able to do pretty much exactly what I want and to live a lifestyle where I can dial up and down my spendings based on my income and do everything I want and that we, I should we I did we did kind of talk about this and I think it's something great Keep no, going. it is and um and that uh, yeah we probably did talk about this a little bit uh and that um that I'm a seasoned professional that I have enough experience and that I can trust myself now so I stopped worrying so much but now fast forward to moving to Paris comes with a different set of challenges to the big strike to the pandemic that is affecting like a lot of people. That was a whole other level of crisis mode and lack of income that has me again worried about the similar kind of similar kind of things. Um, so he also and I was like, so when did you start stop worrying about money? He's, he, he's like, well, since I've been retired, I'm like, well, duh. <laughs> since you've been retired, yeah. He's like, since I'm retired, I have no worry about it at all. I'm like, well. Yes, you just have a fixed amount of income every month and it's pretty good. So, and, and you don't want to be working again and you don't care about earning anymore. So yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, and then what I thought in particular, so I thought we could talk about that, but then we'll see. But I thought what would be interesting is what do you talk about with your parents? And what do people talk about with their parents? Where do they go on, where did you go on vacations on holidays with your parents as a kid? Uh, because that's a large part of our, how we grow up and we grow up taking holidays with parents, right? Yeah. So anyway, so that's kind of opening the door. I mean, I'm shifting things around because normally you're asking me the question. But hey, if this inspires any question from me, from you, we can do that too. It kind of has. And the I think all of that's brilliant. And I, I would like to link it to play <clears throat> and what play, how much play because a lot of the time summer holidays is just like play like when i was growing up yes we go on holiday with parents and we can talk about that but a lot a lot of it was the make up making up games hanging out with people the guys i knew in the area going on my bikes climbing trees like it was that it was and when you when you start to break down and look at what we talked about before about you were beginning to define play you know i know you're doing videos about looking at the different I'm so yeah, of... I'm behind on everything, including <laughs> those videos. I am so late. I know you're beginning And I've done to. like crap this week. I was just came back from my parents' place. And anyway, it takes me several. I mean, it's like coming back from a vacation, even though this wasn't a vacation, really. Uh, I was working through most of it. It was just working in different, different places, <laughs> but <laughs> which I've done as well. Uh, which is cool. It's nice to be working in different places, but it just still takes me a lot of time to readapt and come back home yeah. and kind of land yeah. again. Like yeah. when you go away on vacation, like when you go away anywhere, I think, right? Which yeah. is a, a different topic. Sorry, I'm taking us somewhere else. But yes, 
I remember school and it's it, it's this idea of summer holidays and holidays altogether is a funny one because it's like wow we have uninterrupted freedom <laughs> to play and it's a big deal yeah but it also is to. training us from a young age to say that there are long periods of time where you have to work and then because you've done all that you have the reward of not doing anything or having this long-term break which i find interesting and not not really the way I'm interested in leading my life. Um, and now I can't really, I, I, I mean, I'm, I, I look at how I can lead my life different from the norm, I guess. But, uh, and in that, that's where I go to this, the a quote, but so I finished this one, but I refer back to it and I have, oh, I started this one because you talked about it, um, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but th this, this quote, I really love that the master in the art of living makes little difference makes little distinction between his work and his play, his labor and his leisure, his mind and his body, his information and his recreation, his love and his religion. He hardly knows which is which. He simply pursues his vision of excellence at whatever he does, leaving others to decide whether he's working or playing. To him, he's always doing both. This is so brilliant. It's so brilliant. And, <laughs> that's amazing. And it loops back to some of the things I talk about with my parents because I went to see my parents yesterday. Oh, cool. I mean, we were outside and we're talking like, so my sister and her boyfriend were there and we talk, we talk about politics and we talk about like random internet clips, what's making us laugh. But there's always a sense of, especially with my mum talking to me, mm -hmm. she's like, when are you going to go away? When are you going to have a holiday? When are you going to like do nothing? You to her or her to you? Her to me. Okay. When are you going to do nothing? You're always doing something. <laughs> and like I'm I'm the kind of person that's like well I'm at home and I'm reading books and I'm like d building my coaching business and I'm doing a podcast with, with you and like we stream it and I'm doing more live stream and I'm writing and Davina and I are doing things in our house and we're like to me I'm like I'm enjoying every moment I don't have to stop what I'm doing go somewhere else and be like oh i've had a holiday I've, I've experienced play and then come back to whatever so that quote i think speaks to how i you know i after hating teaching for a long time like i love it i basically go to school and talk about stuff that i love to talk about and the young people learn <laughs> that's my job and but there's, and it's, it's a lot of fun and I make it a lot of fun, but the idea of separating everything, because I think my mum worries that like I'm stressed out all the time because I'm doing loads of things, but that's her imposing her view of things on me. Yeah. I'm enjoying everything. <laughs> it's a funny one. Cause also talking about as children or young people, the, vacation and the summer holidays is a huge opportunity as we said for freedom play <clears throat> but then it shifts as you go into your adult working career to the it's not it's not necessarily play anymore the break in the holiday is about like i am so exhausted that i need this time to go do something different and for a lot of people that means just lay down on a beach and do nothing yeah yeah uh yeah. But, but it's but that's a function of you being so exhausted from the rest of your life now, some people really love laying on a beach. And I love doing nothing for a while. I mean, laying mm. on a beach is not my favorite thing, but uh, I have occasionally had a vacation where with a lot of uh, just not doing much. But mm. I also integrate a lot of not doing much in, in, my, in my life, <laughs> basically. You know, taking naps and just having an easy... But if you love your work and you're getting to use some of the ideas about play... Like that quote, and I'm, I'm sure that you're going to bring in Alan Watts at some point. Why would, like, who needs a holiday? You don't need, like, a holiday. You just kind of bring play to everything, surely. Yeah, but, well, then, then you don't need a holiday. You, you might. You might still want to go do stuff. Oh, yeah. now, everything yeah, you've yeah. been saying, I am suspecting that you... Uh, so, actually, what do your holidays look like if you go away somewhere? One of the There's different okay. profiles and types of how people like true. to do that, right? It's true. So what usually happens is my my wife will say, Davina will say, Oh well, let's go on a holiday. We need to go on a holiday or something like that. And then 
we'll have a conversation and we'll come up with a bunch of different ideas and then eventually something emerges so last year we went to thailand and we didn't do much and that was the way we created it to a do resort type thing resort beach yeah. okay yeah and 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 it was just us not really doing much but one of the best holidays we've been on was when we flew to we flew to Vancouver and did a driving holiday all around I saw the British, Col British Columbia and like yeah, crossing time zones from driving was kind of like mad for me. And then we uh, we went on a on the boat. We saw orcas. We didn't expect to. It was wow. kind of every single holiday we've ever had has always worked out really well. But it starts with this conversation about what do we want to get from a holiday. What are we creating? Like and because we do it together and we, we're very different in the way we approach life, but also the, the things that we need. But we always create a holiday that suits us both. Yeah. And then the holiday is always great. So, yeah, it was, we came back. The going on holiday, the whole process of going becomes part of the enjoyment, a bit yeah. like part of the creative kind of joy of it. So that was last year going to Thailand was the same thing. Getting there, we, we enjoyed every moment of it, the, the plane, the stopover, everything we did, the opportunities, the sitting around, reading, the drinking, like everything, the food. But it, the, but I think that's, I think it goes back to what are we gonna create? It's an intentional creation. Yeah. And I, I like think that. that's, that's a, but that's, you know, we do that, we do loads of that actually thinking about it, it's not just holidays we do like that. We do loads of things like that. Yeah, I mean, and I wouldn't be surprised. The way that you do your holidays is probably a lot of the way that you do life, just like the way that you do work. Hmm. Um, and there's another, there's another thing that you just reminded me of, which is sometimes you take it as like just something that you need to do because you really need a break because you've had too much of your own life. And I completely understand that because a lot of people yeah. have. Yeah. I, I generally think it's not particularly healthy, but... It's also a lot of the way that we built our world and a lot of the way people are. Uh, but also that same that same thing of wanting to have a break and a time out from your own life. One of the sides that is the same about well, the way that you can create it and that is different from you and I staying in our living rooms, working on podcasts, reading and everything else, which is to move your context and to take yourself out of your context of your house, what you know every day to see something different because mm. that opens up different ways mm -hmm. of thinking and mm -hmm. seeing the world and new conversations. And that is that I think that's where something meets uh, a benefit of all kinds of holidays, even mm -hmm. if you're just really tired and you need something else and you need a different kind of environment. That is also what you need. You need to have a different just um, a different experience than your usual one. Mm. And sometimes it's driven out of need, like you've had enough, you're too working too much, too much of the same routine, whatever, or you just want to take a break, you want to sleep or, you know, under the pressures of whether it be family life, work life, etc. Or, in, and I think the case that we've been, you were just mentioned, and I have the same thing, I'm like, I'm perfectly happy here, uh, which is true. But then I miss out on the opportunity and the benefit of seeing something else completely different and learning and just being inspired and fed by it. Because mm. every time we've been away or been on holiday, it, we learn something, we yeah. discover something, be it about ourselves or about another way of looking at something. And it stimulates new ways. It does totally stimulate new ways of looking at the world and new ways of thinking. Something he talks about in deep work is work really, really hard and intensely on something yeah. and then don't leave space to whatever. And yeah, I'm looking forward to reading happen. the book. I'm just reading the intro. I'm, I, I've heard a lot of great things from you and other people about this book. So it's, a really, it's also a really easy book to get through. He writes in a very tight, clean way and it, it very practical. Yeah. Very practical. Yeah, that's so what you, I thought. There is something well, about that's what you said as well, actually. There is something about being very, very switched on mm. and then switching off and allowing yourself to just be wherever you are. But of course, the pandemic has shifted the context for everybody. Yeah. 
<laughs> a lot it's of people are taking so a huge amount of people taking vacations wherever they are. Uh, I had friends of friends visit from London on Thursday, and it was just <laughs> so a friend told me, "Hey, if there's friends visiting London right now, and you know, if you want their number, want to, I'm like, yeah, sure, why not?" So I actually managed to. That is one benefit also of me being really, really central in Paris. I asked them mm -hmm. what they were doing, and they were like, "Well, walking through here." And I'm like, yeah, that's where I live. So I know a good wine bar if you want to catch up later, because that's what they wanted to do. Mm. Uh, and I, I could do that without breaking any of my normal rhythm of the day and just meeting them at the end of my day, just basically outside my door. Um, which I, anyway, that's me wondering about how long or if I should stay in the same place because of the price of rent and everything else. Um, and a large part saying that, sorry, anyway, talking about the benefits. But, the, but that's not my point. My point is going on in a tangent I didn't want to go on. <laughs> my point was, I was the first time, the first visiting people I see oh, wow. this yeah. summer. Because I'm like, yeah. oh, there's people coming from a foreign country, even though it's just the Eurostar on the other side of the pond, uh, of the channel, not the pond. Um, and there's presumably people coming through all the time. But there's so few tourists in Paris this summer. Mm. There's so few tourists. That everyone that is there, I'm like, where, where? How do they get there? <laughs> I, don't know, I don't really understand. So there's going to be a few more in August, but I want to take advantage to visit things in Paris that are usually swarmed with tourists, and that now I have tons of space to go visit. So even mm -hmm. though it's annoying uh, and tedious that we have to wear a mask, and there's going to be some of them that are time limited, um, I, there's so many museums and and monuments in Paris that I've not seen, even though I grew up here that uh, I'm going to do that this summer. So it was, anyway, yeah, my original point is that it's, it's almost become funny to see somebody visiting another country. I bumped into a friend who told me he was going to Portugal. I'm like, oh, really? Oh, how are you going? It was like, I'm flying. I was like, really? There's flights? <laughs> <laughs> Just the whole thing, this whole, this whole year is so weird. It's changed so many of outlooks on everything. <laughs> and conversely, I have a lot of friends who are just uh, spending their vacations in their own country. So either whether it's the UK or in France, visiting stuff. Um, I'm perfectly content not doing much. I, I went to visit some family, but as I said, I was working really more than anything else with like a break at the end of the day. That was a change of atmosphere, which was nice too. Um, and that's, partly, the kind of, that's the kind of nature of the freelancer, right? Yeah. The nature of the freelancer is also, yeah, I can sometimes take breaks and do things. So there's a few things in action there. One is the fact that I didn't make a lot of money. Uh, mm -hmm. Two is I have friends living in beautiful places and my parents too that I could just go see for a few days. And that's kind of a bit of a break from my apartment in Paris. It's not necessarily like a big holiday to go visit something I've never seen before, but it's nice. Mm -hmm. uh, three, and this is more of a thing for me on a regular basis, is like I don't necessarily want to go or feel like going on a vacation by myself because I've done a lot of that. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have any other plans uh, to go th do things with friends. And I'm probably not going to do that abroad. And I'm a lot more concerned with working right now or producing work and generating opportunities for income at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, and or concerned with I want money to go ski next winter rather than do things in the summer right now. Um, mm. Are you? Yeah, you've been skiing a couple of times in the past winter, isn't it? Two, last two years? A, last two a lot more than a couple of times. Yeah, I mean, it's oh, become yeah? really, really important to me. And I only skied one week the last winter, which was a lot less than the previous three winters. I was on a six week ski trip uh, two years ago that was just phenomenal. And um, yeah, I, I definitely, I want to ski a lot more. And, uh, oh, and the, the other thing, which was, well, not holiday related, but I weighed myself yesterday. That was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, this is not going to, this is going to be ugly, but I think we should do it. I was like looking at my belly and going, I'm not really happy with this. It's not going well. Um, but then so, how much, sometimes that can be a summer thing. And there's two different camps, I think. But it was, this thing. was a lockdown. I clearly overate and drank and then after lockdown which i kept doing the same thing everybody's uh, my, dealing with it differently yeah of course yeah some people were like i got in fantastic shape was exercising didn't drink and i was like mm, interesting okay well i cooked <laughs> a lot and i drank a lot and i did i did a tiny bit of exercising like morning bits not much to be honest and i didn't it didn't last until the end of the lockdown and that i can't and that was already like three months ago <laughs> So then how would you bring play 
to all of that, to whatever you're dealing with? How, do, how does one bring that sense of what you read from the book to what we're doing in a summer or in life? So that's a really good, really good question. Actually, that's funny because, of course, you said you know, I was going to bring in Alan Watts at some point, and that's the first thing I'm thinking about. Um, there, there's, so I don't know how, but I'm going to start with like what it is. That makes sense. Um, a sense of play is an approach. If we consider play to be a spectrum and a sense of a state of mind, it doesn't always have to be there. Sorry. Yeah. Right. But there is a certain aspect of this that is bringing some fun, lightheartedness, whimsy, uh, like the twinkle in your eye and the smile at the corner of your face to see humor in situations and things. To see opportunities to just not be so serious. Mm hmm necessarily well you can be serious and there's serious play but not be so significant necessarily or heavy um and that is going to be different for different people because some people tend to be a lot more serious and significant some people tend to have a lot more ease towards uh doing it kind of lightheartedly or fun you can bring play to both those depending on what fits best your your mood so it's good to know for yourself what that means and ideally good to know what it means for your partner or the people that you're the friends or family that you're on vacation with. And in a similar idea uh, to the five love languages, you know, that idea yeah. that you express love in a particular way yeah, and you want to receive it in that particular way. So if you know yeah. how other people that you're with give and receive, you're probably avoiding yourself some trouble. I mean, or, it's made a huge difference in my marriage. Yeah, so imagine that play might be the same thing. And so if you have, there are play, actually in the, that one book, but he talks about play personalities or in other ways, it's a, you have a certain personality. So play is going to look a certain way for you that if you're able to express what your personality is and the way you like to play, and that is actually joins back the creation of expectations for a vacation or a holiday that you were talking about. Mm. And not a lot of people do that, but it does save a lot of trouble, particularly if you go with people that you've not been before. How do you like to do your holidays? Because if you don't talk about it in advance and you go with a friend and you discover that um, they like to wake up at 5 a.m. and to do tons of things while you're expecting to wake up at 10 and sit by the swimming pool <laughs> and they want to do it with you and you're like, well, that so that might lead to trouble. So and both of, them, book, both of them are both of them are play because that's like what I want to be doing and how I want to be expressing myself. And how do you bring that sense of play? I think it's like look, looking at first looking at what do you want to do and what do you like to do for fun and vacation and holidays? Yeah, yeah. Uh, vacation is like my American twangism that keeps going back and forth. So in in your um in that book because yeah. it's been a long time since I read it, does he talk about play personalities? Mm -hmm. Does he have that as an idea? Oh, he does. Yeah, he talks about play personality. I'm gonna have to revisit it then because I'm interested to know, because I um, like my my granddad used to love wordplay, yeah, and interactive, That's playful, cool. cheeky conversations. So a big fan. I don't know if you've heard of the old English comedians, the two Ronnies. You I have. Them? I don't really know them much. I know so, of them, and I've probably watched some things that I didn't really so understand. I think they're completely hilarious as well. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that for me, conversations conversate like yesterday when I was with my my family like shift deliberately shifting context in the conversation or throwing in something witty or funny or like exploring in the conversation is I love that I'm energized by that and to me that's a there's a wonderful sense of exploration oh I love that play. too and the way a bit like our conversations the way it moves yeah around absolutely, and, like, absolutely. And, and those are the ones I prefer and actually it's funny because I also really like people, so I try things out, whether it be on dates or catching up with friends or acquaintances. And if I don't have those kinds of conversations, I start going, this is not really working for me. And sometimes I don't really know how to either bring it or mm. like bring that sense to the conversation or maybe go, well, maybe we don't really, we're not really a good match for hanging mm -hmm. out, whether it's a date match or whether it's like friends hanging out, but it's still somebody I appreciate. 
but I'm thinking more increasingly, like if I, if we, if I don't have that kind of vibe, like the conversation we have, I'm like, wait, well, maybe I shouldn't spend so much time with that person. But this goes back to our very first episode or second episode about self-awareness. If I know more about like what I love, what play means to me, then I'm going to be able to communicate that or understand it or put myself in situations where I can bring that, which then means I'm going to get the most out of whatever situation I'm in. Yes. And that takes a bit because you're not sure. And I, a lot of times you don't think it's worth bringing up. Like, so for example, I went on a long weekend with a friend of mine, I remember years ago, and it's somebody I hung out with all the time. I really appreciate, but we didn't really talk about what we do on vacations. So it turned out that we don't do the same thing at all. Um, and I wanted to go and explore and do things. And he just wanted to sit on the beach and read, uh, which I do like for a bit, but actually that's not what I wanted from that weekend. And also the other things, just like we were sharing a hotel room and it turns out that he likes the AC really, 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 really cold. And I don't. <laughs> so, which is a problem. Um, so this is really interesting because so much. But then I didn't, so, much... so I didn't think of bringing that kind of stuff up. Yeah. And if I had, I would have started thinking maybe that's really arrogant. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then I can also own my arrogance. So, but then for a lot of people, it would be just weird because you're like, well, no, I don't want to talk about that. Let's, it's going to be fine. And if it isn't, then I won't do it again. But it's there's a shame something, because we don't there's take something that much, here you know. about communicating our needs. Mm -hmm. If we can communicate our needs in a really like real way or know what our needs are and communicate them. That allows for so much more flow, interest. Yeah. I, I hesitate to use the word power, but like there's a there's a set, there's a buzziness that happens when everyone knows. You're right. Because you know, sometimes it can feel like when when I tell people what Davina and I do when we're like talking about holidays or whatever, they're like, that just takes all the fun out of it. Well, actually, no, it multiplies the fun and it multiplies. Oh yeah, because there's the this the, the the myth is just spontaneity. So is that a myth? Is that related to play? Is spontaneity related to play? So here's the thing that I was thinking about, because you're asking me how to bring the play, which I think is a fantastic question, but it's also, when you think about it, a ludicrous question. It is. <laughs> because kids just do it. Animals just do it. And you ask a kid, like, how how is it you play? They won't understand what you're saying. <laughs> They'll be like, what? I don't, I play. And, and that's it. What do you, what's your question? I don't understand. <laughs> so, so true. But we forget because we trained ourselves not to because it's wrong or because whatever, particularly in particularly in things like work uh, and resting. And also we don't play as much because we don't necessarily need to. But it also and it might take different. Uh, so in this book, actually, what he goes back to all the time, if you're not sure, then start with movement. movement oh, that's great. Movement naturally will lead to play because it takes you out of your head. Okay. So so this, doing so something physical, so great, whether so it's great. something silly, jumping jacks, or if you're on vacation, just jump in the pool or do whatever, go for, I mean, go for a run might not be play for you, but doing something that, and, and also another way of how to play is bringing yourself out of your comfort zone to have a new experience. Okay. This is so if you brilliant. Don't dance, go dance. This is so brilliant because there's, um, there's a few things I want to say about this. So I'm a huge fan of a website, gmb.io and their fitness programs. Okay. And just like the tone of it, the way they communicate, the way they talk about movement and everything. And in all their programs, they have a section which is play, where you explore yourself and movement and what you can do. This is how I discovered about three weeks ago that I could stand on my head, I could do headstand. Okay. Right. I didn't know I could do that. And I was like, oh, let me try. Because we were messing about in the park. And one of Davina's cousins said, can you stand on your head? And I'm like, I don't know. I never tried. So I tried and I found I could. I was like, oh, wow. And so that's one thing. The other thing is, I, uh, a few years ago, my sister bought me a skateboard. And I used to skateboard when I was young. But there's something really cool about skateboarding. Because well, it's, it's, it obviously it keeps you fit, it's physical, but the balance and the coordination and there's a little bit of fear of like, what if I mess this up completely and fall over? And like, so, so that's something that I'm looking at doing over the summer. And then the, there's a, on the Instagram, I can't remember the guy's account, 
but there's a guy who juggles with kettlebells so the okay. and yeah no i like it's unbelievable so i love doing quirky workouts i do a, a sledgehammer workout you know it's it's different and it's you're exploring it's, there's everything you're saying about play and movement so now i'm thinking why not why not learn to juggle with kettlebells so i've been messaging him on instagram and he's like yeah send me a video of your technique on this movement and i can tell you and then we can start juggling with kettlebells i'm so excited about that <laughs> <laughs> and then the other area it also reminds you of is playing guitar and exploring and pushing musicianship with guitar and yeah i'm practicing the, the exercises but there's something really cool that happens when i'm jamming to a song yeah. like a a whole thing but all of that relates to this other book i'm reading when you talk about movement which is the body keeps the score by i've just started reading it by a guy called bessel van der kolk the really one on my reading list is mind in motion by barbara tversky that well, that I might have too. mentioned before, but sorry, tell me about yours and I'll tell you about so, the one I'm thinking. So about he too. talks about, he's talk, it's, he's a psychiatrist and he's talking a lot about trauma and how we deal with trauma. And one of the things he goes back to is movement and the, when we're scared or when we deal with something traumatic, running and moving ourselves to a safe place is so important. But if you're in a situation where you can't move, and you can't take yourself away from that situation and you can't move yourself. The, the brain does all sorts of weird stuff that I can't quite explain yet, but it, in, it internalizes and keeps reliving that horrific experience. So one of the ways that you can deal with trauma is by movement and moving yourself. So it's so interesting to hear about how start with moving as a way of exploring and getting in touch with that play state. Yeah. Does that mean in your workshops, you're going to get people to stand up and jump around? I don't know. <laughs> to bring play. Maybe. And it's a funny one because I usually think I hate that kind of thing as well. And a lot of people do. Yeah. Because it's so gimmicky. Yeah. But, but it can work. So, so I don't know. To get in touch with play with movement. So brilliant. I'm just going to get up and jump around if I feel like. It's a, I, I don't know. There's also the... If, if everybody in the room is kind of like opposed to it, thinking it's a gimmick, doesn't want to do it, that'll it overrule work. the feeling of play. So I think it's got to be appropriate to the context. Yeah. Uh, and now I can I, do that myself when I'm by myself. I can totally do that. You know, like, but yeah, in a group situation. Remember the, the first, so I actually don't, you don't know this, but the, of several characteristics, the first characteristic of play is that it's freely engaged in. Ah, you can't force So I it. can invite people to play, but you can't force them. So mm -hmm. if I ask people that they're, they're forcing themselves to do movement, then it doesn't mean Not that play. there's necessarily play. Mm -hmm. So I'm also thinking, how do I bring play to the environment, to a business environment that is going to be appropriate? Um, and it's an invitation, so it's not a it's not a compulsory condition. It's something that I want and I want people to be, have a state of mind to play when I work with them, but mm. they don't have to, to mm. get the work done. Mm. Um, and I'm still questioning a lot of the way that I'm going to be doing my workshops, but so generally speaking, if you're out in the world, yes, movement is the right kind of thing. But if you're in one of my workshops looking to strategy, I don't know, maybe, maybe not, but also you don't necessarily have to do jumping jacks. So yeah, everything that I would be offering would be is seamless within the context of what we're doing. So let's say if you're brainstorming an exercise and you have the room and you can ask people to stand up and put a post-it on the wall, that is movement. Yeah. That might be conducive and appropriate to what is going on. Yeah. The twist might be that make it slightly more playful in what you're asking people to do or how you're asking them to do it. And there can be movement included inside of that that is not purely physical, but that might be conducive to bringing a play state of mind. I got it. Yeah, you can weave it in. You're also reminding me that some of the best creative, interesting, powerful, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to say powerful, conversations that I have at school to do with lesson planning 
or when I'm sitting around in the staff workroom and somebody says something random and it bounces around the room with and like with some inane thing about a lesson plan because from somebody something said somebody might say how do you do this on powerpoint or i'm trying to do this in my lessons and what happens i mean four or five of us will go oh have you thought about this or look at this and then somebody will say something i'll usually say something weird referencing some like star wars rubbish that is one of the rare advantages of open plan offices and office environments with working with a team that i occasionally miss and and then it, it leads to something however yeah. i will sit there with these headphones on basically saying communicating to everyone if you come near me i will slap you because i'm trying to concentrate so and i put on like really loud music and just ign because i need to do something so the, the whole open he talks about that in deep work interestingly about open plan offices and how yeah, you there's do a lot work of criticism of that. for that kind of stuff it doesn't yeah work. He, he it doesn't work about, for focused work. No, he talks about a balance of the two. You have a collaborative area with bits off it where people can go do stuff and then come back together. Something like that. But it's a uh, that place that in mind, I think it's incredibly powerful. And it, it, you know, I think it used to happen in, in my family when we were watching, watching something together. Saturday nights, we used to watch things together on TV yeah. as a family. Yeah. And then I remember with my dad and my mom, like we we just there would be a collective conversation about whatever it was we were we were doing, but I don't think that happens. It's like I don't just, know, maybe a little bit. So it's uh, it's it is very intriguing to see this how how you make it happen. You were going to mention a book. Yes. Uh, so I was thinking two things. Uh, so I was thinking several things at the same time, but. Uh, one, if it's logic, if it makes sense for us to come back to the play personalities from the book, yeah, that might inform some of what you want to do on vacation, which is kind of interesting. Um, or in, I'm going to look at that. Rather. I'm going to do it. Yeah, that's great. Uh, to the book I was referring to, and this is out of a like a two hour conversation on the Sam Harris podcast that I listened to a year or two ago with Barbara mm -hmm. Tversky. Barbara Tversky is the wife of the late Amos Tversky that worked oh, with Daniel Kahneman yeah. on the System 1, System 2 stuff. And yeah, it turns yeah. out his wife Thinking is also like small. a very serious like researcher, psychologist. I can't remember if he's a psychiatrist or not. Um, I love that book. That's one of my favorite books. Uh, Thinking Fast and Slow? Yeah. You know, I, 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 so I'm embarrassed. I've, I've talked about this stuff at work and everything else and I actually haven't read the book. To be uh, fair, it's it's a massive book, yeah, and it, it took me a while to get through, but I absolutely love so it. So this one is all about similar stuff that you just talked about, and she goes and researched everywhere in uh, human history, experiments, research, animals about how movement, how our mind may start with movement, mm. uh, and how movement impacts the brain and the mind, and uh, it sounds like really, really fascinating. So it's, that's one of the many 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 books on my reading list and i'm not i'm still not speed reading or barely ever listening to things in double speed um so well, i've started the double speed listening thing i think that's that's really cool it's helped me i i am in two minds about it i started doing a little bit of that on some youtube videos against my original principle because a lot of people were listening to things in double speed and friends and, and you know, people. So then I was like, well, wait a minute, what am I doing? Why do I actually need to, to cram this in half the time? This is you. You always go a level deeper. No, but always. it's true. I'm like, what yeah. am I doing with this information? Yeah. And actually, most of the stuff that I listen to I, are really interesting, but I do listen to them first for leisure. Mm. So why am I trying to cram it in half, like tw twice as much? And I'm like, well, you know what? I'm going to listen to things or watch things at their own speed and whatever else is just, I was not meant to be, does it, you know, I'll focus on the normal speed. And I don't know, for now, that's what I thought. I'm like, because there's a whole, then you get into an effectiveness competition speed thing that I'm like, what am I going to do with twice as much information? I already have more information than I'd know what to do with. <laughs> So Tversky, yeah. what's her book called? Mind in Motion. Okay, wow. 
And play Basically personalities. Guys read books. Play personalities is so there's shit, eight play personalities in the book, and I'll just give the titles. You want me to dig it on any? Yeah, yeah, go, go for it. The Joker, the <laughs> Kinesthet. <laughs> Wait, the Joker. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of, obviously. <laughs> Um, and I, I thought I kind of like, I'm not only one. I don't think anybody is just one. And there's no, kind of there's no test or anything. There might, he might have some exercises online, but they're just tools or interesting ones. Kinesthete, that kinesthet, kinesthete. I don't know. The explorer, the competitor, the director, the collector, and the artist slash creator, and the storyteller. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Wow, I'm gonna have to reuse the book. <laughs> There you go. So, well, I mean, the explorer obviously likes to explore things around them. So that comes through in holiday and play. Mm. The kinesthet is people are, are people who like to move and need to move in order to think, in the words of Sir Ken Robinson, who's also very interesting. Mm. Um, so they, they may well take, you know, a yoga retreat vacation or a, or exercising like full-on focus thing but or the competitor might do that as well mm. the competitor is you know obviously that's kind of in the title looking for competition uh the director i was quite a bit of a director in, in playing uh, as a kid i organized vast scenes so you like planning and executing scenes and events i do plan a lot of things for a lot of people and i do spend a lot of time researching things that we're going to be doing that we anytime, anytime, like I'm going to have lunch with a friend and we're going to go to art <laughs> exhibit. And I spent a lot of time looking for what the right restaurant would be. And in the end, she chose it. But anyway. <laughs> so hang on. So what but, did you and, do and when, kid, when you were young? As a kid, yeah. that yeah, would yeah. mean that I have big Lego sets. I set up all my Lego. I play Lego. And then I have like my other figurines, Transformers, whatever figurines. And I set them in an elaborate scene in action of what's going on it's fixed but i'm like this is like a, a freeze frame of a whole action scene going on wow wow you, you didn't do that <laughs> um no i played lego i would play with the lego and i've been i rebuilt some lego during lockdown i would physically like move it around and i'd imagine it in my head like, yeah, I rarely did that. I did that a little. I did that as a small kid, but as I grew up, so as like from four, five, six, and then seven to nine ish sort of thing, I would spend a lot more time building and then just positioning, positioning right. everything. And I'm like, once it's done, I'm I'm satisfied with it. Wow. So you, I mean, you you've obviously seen the Lego movie. You love the Lego. Yeah. Movie. Yeah, I do. Because I, I didn't I think, that I would, but I, I really did love see, it. See, I think it's awesome. I think that film is all about play it is it's a bit different flavor all about it, play it's fantastic it's it, and about how the importance of play and how it changes as we get older i think it's a complete exploration of the entire thing yeah and it's such a great film it is a great, a great film. film i really really liked it and a lot of people don't like it which is funny but i'm like I why? Really, why but a lot of people a lot of people just stop at the first song <laughs> it grates on them and you know the idea of play greats on a lot of people who take things seriously and significantly. Everything is awesome. Yeah. Well, the guy who wrote that was in Devo, band Devo. I can't remember that. I don't know. Oh, okay. That's another little thing. A band. Okay, cool. <laughs> They're a band. They did a song called um, "When a When a Something About When a Problem Comes, You Must Whip It." We, the song was called Whip It. When a problem comes along, you must whip it. So the song was called. Cool. So are you going on holidays this summer? We, as well, we, we were. As we're going to go run towards wrapping up and somehow find some oh, kind God. of thread wow. to this conversation? <laughs> I didn't realise that was the time. <laughs> so w summers have always been about playing holidays, yes, and we were. But I think summer as a homeowner has also become for us about what are we going to do in the home? What are we going to, and maybe like thinking about lockdown stuff as well. So we've had a load of work done on the front of the house and it looks so much better, so much better. But Davina and I are still talking about what we're going to do for our anniversary. Are we going to go away? We'll probably do a, a driving trip to, let me hang on, let me see if I can phrase this. 
we'll probably drive to discover a new context where we can input some new experiences. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that we'll sounded probably, very scientific for just driving around and discovering the countryside or something. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll drive somewhere and, and like probably do something. At, at least that's, but we haven't, we kind of spoken about it. We haven't done a lot. Probably stay in it. the country? Yeah, probably stay, stay in the country. There's so much to discover in each one of our countries, to be honest. And there's yeah. a, a large part of what I wanted to do in coming back was see more of France and Italy and so mm. I do want to do all those things but I'd like to have a partner in crime to do that with so and you know and and yeah a lot more of my concern right now is as I've talked about is is money so actually the last thing because my father said talk about money with James so am I okay doctor is this is this is this is it is it okay actually my question then is so I usually talk about what's on my mind with my parents and the, one of the things that's been on my mind is money. So not having enough, having enough work, et cetera, all that jazz, right? Um, but then they worry about the fact that I worry about money. So then I'm like, maybe I shouldn't talk about it with them. So it's not like I don't, I, I, I think I also talk about what's going on that's working, but I spend more time on what's on my mind, whatever that is. So whether it's good, bad, indifferent. Yeah. And, and, I think that and the, I tend to, sometimes I, I wonder if I'm boring people, but in any conversation, not just my parents, I tend to talk about what's on my mind. Sometimes I'm like, maybe I, I'm wallowing a little bit, but also it's a way to just get things out of my head in dialogue. And I think it's different for different people. I don't know. So my wife loves to talk and that's how that helps her think. I like to think and then talk, or I like to explore in conversation with my parents as I've got older. I, because I love them so much, I want to like support them in whatever they're dealing with. And they of course want to support me. Yeah. And one of the, one of the best ways I know I can support my parents is listening to my dad as he talks because my mum gets bored and my sister gets bored. But I, I love listening to my dad <laughs> and we intellectually will disagree and we'll get into things, but mostly I know what I can provide being able to listen to my dad gives him so much. And of course, when I'm thinking about something or I, I go to him for advice and he's another thing that I'll take on board and then that will inform whatever we're doing. But it's a, as I've got older, it's become much more like a partnership, a collaboration. The, the expression of love with my parents has become that way. Of course they worry. And then I talk, but then I worry about them as well. My mum's health has been whatever, my health has been whatever, my dad's state of mind, whatever, like, but the, it's a talk, whatever we talk about, I agree with you, whatever's on my mind, I'll start talking to them about it. And if money is on my mind, I think I would talk about them, talk about that with my parents. And summer has always been that time when I think family will come together, be it on a holiday or talking or something where it feels like, oh, we've got room to do all those things that we, what it do but we don't always do them yeah but the i think underlying our conversations over the next few weeks is going to be exploring play yeah and the other thing that i thought about actually uh, which it might be interesting either for the september or this this summer is when my father was like well you know i stopped worrying about money since my retirement i'm like well yeah so and i thought well wait a minute that the old, my old, the older generation has a whole other set of concerns. I mean, maybe they don't really understand mine because he also said, "I'm not forty anymore. I'm just I've got my retirement. I don't have to worry about money at all." And there's a difference. About there's a difference things. between wait, worrying about money and last thinking about money. Thought was, wait a minute, are we being relevant to the young people that we're talking to, or are we talking too much from our perspective? Not, I don't know about too much. Anyway, are we being useful? Or are we just talking about shit that is completely like they don't get at all? And I was like, well, wait a minute. That's interesting. No, that... he, here's, here's how I frame it. All right, here's okay. how I always come back to it. And this might be a good place to bring it all together. Mm -hmm. That whenever I've spoken with the pupils in my classes about whatever I'm dealing with, about whatever I'm thinking about, or... The conversations I've had with friends about bigger things like play, like jobs, like careers, like reading, like, like whatever it is, they're interested. Okay. 
because they're looking to see what's relevant for them. But because our whole conversation is about, I think it's partly for me been discovering where I'm at in my life. Like, oh my God, I'm old. The 90s weren't like yesterday. And sometimes I feel like the 90s was. No, the 90s was like years and years ago that we, I have something to offer. We mm. have something to offer in our conversations to younger people because, because we're playful, because we're willing to explore and because we're, we do it in an interesting way in the, that allows people to think. Cool. Perfect. That's a great way to put it. All right. Never Thank doubt, you, never doubt that the stuff you're doing and the way that you think villain isn't having a big impact because it is, it does on me. And I'm, I mean, then I doubt everything. That's part of my, thing. I know that, that is part of your thing. You doubt everything, <laughs> but you know, that's part of being the Joker, I guess. But the, you know, I know I'll go back in September and I'm going to keep going on about our conversations and there'll be somebody who's watched it. There'll be somebody who's, you know, I told you about that ex pupil who's starting to read sapiens because of, because of our conversations. Yeah, no. And I have no idea what kind of impact it has, but this is a great way to end. And, we have a lot more to talk about, notably the Joker, and I almost finished that whole lecture from Alan Watts, and I have a lot more to say about that. Double uh, speed. You'd have got through it. Huh? If you watched it on double speed, you'd watched it. You've got through it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm probably going to still listen to it again because there's so much. It's pretty, like, there's a lot in there. I Send it to me. I'll, do, I'll, I'll I listen to it. I did send it to you. Week. I'll send it to you again. No, you didn't. Yeah. Oh, yeah you did. did. Weeks ago. Did. I didn't add it to my things to do. That. Yeah, I, I could have like moved on to other things if I was listening in double speed. You're absolutely right. But... <laughs> that was facetious. It was, Thank it you. was great. Thank <laughs> you. Have a great day and uh, week ahead. And I'll talk next week. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Cool.